Elaine, welcome to the show. I've been wanting you on for ages and so amazing to have you here. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for having me. This is this is a really uh, career defining moment to meet back up with the coach that gave me the push that I needed to get where I am today. So thank you. I, I am available to you anytime to share my story with your your audience. Uh, and an incredible story. I was talking about it in the intro. You're one of my favorite stories to share uh, because it's such an incredible journey and you're such a firecracker and you know that too, <laughs> how fierce you are. But take us back to the beginning when you and I first met. Why did you think online courses, what was going on with your business? So I am a hairstylist for 36 years at this point, standing for 12 hours a day, not eating lunch, not going to the bathroom, you know, living a pretty crazy lifestyle. Um, salon owner for 32 of those years, you know, being the leader, the coach, the trainer, the mom, the all things. So I found myself, I really loved growing people and helping them get busy behind the chair. And I found myself being more drawn to teaching than doing, but there also was not a lot of money in that, in our industry. And I knew I couldn't replace my income as a salon owner, as an educator, doing it the way it's always been done. So one of the things I kept hearing myself say is there has to be a way to say this one more time and how to record it so that I don't have to keep repeating it because yeah. the information is evergreen. It never, ever changes. It's fundamental, you know, formulation laws of chemistry that are never going to change. So I was saying it over and over. And as you can hear in my recipe, voice, my, my voice is my weakest part of my body. So I struggle to get my words out from years of cheerleading and talking over blow dryers as a hairdresser. So I started, this is how far back it goes. I started with creating a VHS version of my formulation class and it was long and painful um, to watch. It was just way too long. I didn't know anything about editing and condensing and doing all the things I do now. And then it evolved into a DVD. And then from there, I would ask my clients who were in the corporate world, I'm like, you guys do those, you know, virtual meetings where you can talk to people in other countries. How can I do that with hairdressers? And they would kind of look at me like, I don't know, my company just does it. I just show up and I'm in the meeting. I don't know how it's done. So pre-pandemic, none of us had access to things like Zoom. Um, so I started out with just trying to create these recorded lessons that were all pre-done in a library and so forth, trying to create a course. But like most people listening right now, I can guarantee they're like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And they're suffering from analysis paralysis and they're sitting there saying, I don't know how to do the tech. I don't know how to record it, how to edit it, where to put it. And that's where I was when you popped. I, I always say things pop into your world for a reason, a season or a lifetime. You were my reason for sure. Um, we were on vacation. I was in California, my happy place. We were in Newport Beach and I brought my microphone and my laptop and I was ready to dig in. And again, what tech do I, how do I record? Where do I record? Where do I put it once I record? And I think it was, you were on Amy Porterfield's podcast. Mm -hmm. And I would think it was like the sticky note podcast about yeah. like getting, and I was like, wow, this is exactly what I need. I need to get structure and a system. I've never been a system gal. And I called you for um, a call, you know, a, what's, the, what's the word? What do you call them? The sales call. It was a sales call. Yeah. Um, and call. you were like, I've got you. I'm going to be your accountability partner. And I was like, that's exactly what. I'm missing. I have the passion. I have the drive. I have the content. I need the accountability. I have a treadmill in my garage that's been there for a year <laughs> and a half and I have 30 pounds to lose. And my lazy butt has not been on there because nobody's accounting for it. Like whether I did it or not. And I always put coach work for that. Elaine. I need a coach for that. <laughs> so I, I am a big proponent now that I am a coach, especially yes. I've, I've had a life coach who's helped me make big changes in my life. I've had you coach me in the online space and now I need a personal trainer coach, but I think that all of us can benefit from coaches. And I think, 
you know, just knowing I had that call coming up with you. And even if it was an hour before, I'm like, crap, I didn't do my homework. I need to get this done. And that's what made the difference between being someone who has is aspiring to be an online educator and digital CEO and someone who actually does it and makes a living doing it. That clearly was the the difference in my life. Um, I, it just changed everything having that accountability. Okay. I love that. And I remember you had an audience and I thought this woman has got something she's, she's got character, got personality. You've got great content. You have an audience. It's just a matter of finding out the right invite and offer for you. I remember when we worked together and that was back when I told Elaine before, like, here's my mastermind mug when we had the mastermind and I loved working on the mastermind because I got to coach folks like you who are just on the verge of busting out and and just kind of connecting the dots. And I remember for you, it was about the offer. And I think you were putting out uh, like a mid price point course and that wasn't and that wasn't working out as well. And then we started to pivot to something else, to a different strategy. You wanna talk about what we did? Yeah, so I had been doing um, Periscope for a while, just trying to get my face out there and getting people to know who I was. And then Periscope kind of just fizzled and I yeah. started doing Facebook Lives and that wasn't really getting any traction. And you were like, no, don't stop, keep doing that. And I was like, oh, okay. So kudos to you for pushing me because now that's like my number one source of where my audience comes from. So I just kept doing it religiously every single Wednesday, 10 AM coffee and colorful conversation. Yeah. I've been doing it now for seven years. I've missed ah. two. One was for my dad's funeral and one was for my godmother's funeral. And that's it. Like wow. I do not miss. Um, so that's something really important. Consistency. Consistency. You hear it. Yeah. Yeah. You hear it on podcast. You hear it at these, like I went to Amy's, um, in-person workshop and they're like consistent, consistent, consistent. And I'm like, amen, hallelujah. It's absolutely true. You have to keep showing up. Even when I was talking to two people in the beginning, I'm yes. like, this is so weird. I'm talking to myself, um, but so worth for it. The future though, right? That's exactly what you were doing. And, and now you have an audience. Okay, keep, keep 100%. Going. So I was doing, I thought that a static course was my answer because I'm like, it's hairdressers. I want them to be able to just pop in, watch a video and grow from there. And I did that for my first, I would say three months of doing this as my full-time job. I was selling a course, I think it was 297 yeah. and it was called Hair Color Simplified. And my first launch went great. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe anybody's even buying this. This is amazing. I was so excited. And then fast forward like another six months and I thought, I don't know how it went. I don't see results. They weren't active in the Facebook group. It was just kind of like buy the course, forget you have it, move on. So I got paid, which is great, but that wasn't what I started doing this for. I really want hairdressers to be able to make a six figure income as a result of my coaching and education. So you and I, you know, put our heads together again and you were like, you need to like ease them in to knowing you, knowing your style of teaching and give a lower price entry point for them to get to know you. And I was like, that's awesome. So we started with, um, I think it was let's kick brass was the first yes, one let's kick and brass. it was yeah, $37 mm -hmm. and it was amazing. Like How many people, people did you get jumped on right course? in. They loved, oh my gosh. I wish I would have looked at my metrics. It was a lot. It was definitely, did you get a thousand? Is that too high? No, I don't think it was a thousand, but it was, it was, it was a lot, a lot, so, okay. several hundred people. And I was yeah. like, wow, yeah. one ask. And they all jumped in. And then I know Amy says like, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, keep doing the same thing. But I was like, I got to keep Your going with this. Something. Yeah. They wanted something more. So, yeah. cause the same people kept showing up. Right. So then I did a $57, I think it was called let's formulate. So that yes. was a $57. And then it was like, okay, that went well. Let me try a $97 and that went well. So then I was like, the static course isn't quite working. The one-offs are great, but they're like, okay, what's next? So I ended up doing a much larger library and I created it as a monthly membership for hairstylists. And it initially was $49 a month or they could pay $4.97 for the year. So they got like two months free for the year. And that was great too. I had, I had like two great launches with that. And then what I realized was the people that were paying monthly 
weren't engaging. They weren't showing up for the coaching calls. They weren't opening the library and they just kept getting billed. And again, I feel bad. Like when I look at my Stripe, I'm like, Jill, honey, you've been paying for this for six months. You haven't <laughs> opened it. Like as much as I love that I'm getting paid to sit on Come the beach, on, Jill. I yeah. want you to learn, you know? Yeah. So I was like, okay, this monthly thing is not working for the hairstylist. They mm. need more skin in the game. So okay. then I shifted to just paying in full for the year. And I saw a huge difference in the results. So it, what's wonderful about this whole thing is you can continue to pivot and just, just don't be stuck in the I'm going to phase and just do, do the 37, do the 57, do the yes. 97, do something to have that proof of concept. And now like we just had a hurricane here where I live in Florida, there's so much devastation. I literally now can go on my computer in 30 seconds, I can create a one day summit. I can have myself and five other educators do a three hour session on Zoom and we can raise $3,000 in an afternoon for people that you're suffering with this hurricane devastation. So that's so powerful. Once you have that audience, it's like the sky's the limit with how many ways you can benefit from that community piece. It's amazing. Oh, I love that. Okay. I, I just want to unpack this a little bit. So what I love is that you were open, right? You were like, Hey, I'll, I'll try any kind of strategy. And we started off with that $37 price point. We saw hundreds of people, we saw traction there. Right. And then usually I would say, Hey, keep going with that masterclass, offer it over and over, but you were smart. You said, but you know, my people want, if I keep offering a couple of different classes, I know they'll bite and they did. Right. So you continue to offer, you didn't offer a hundred different classes, right. but you offered like half a dozen. Right. And then I want to say you sold into a course at the, did you start selling into a course at the end of them? Uh, at the end of the master classes in the beginning, Elaine, or did you go into the membership? The very, very beginning was the static 297. So okay. they came in for the one-off and then it was like, if you like that, you know, then join you this. The static. And yeah. then you realized they, they needed something monthly. And then- and the, coaching, the coaching, the coaching, piece, coaching piece, I think was the biggest thing to add because just having another library of videos, they have YouTube, they have Instagram, yeah. they have TikTok. Smart. They see all those quickie little how-tos, but having a coach- you know, talk to you about your pricing, about your limiting beliefs, about money and what you're, you know, deserving of. And all of, I have the life coaching piece thrown in there that they didn't realize that they were yeah. getting. So that piece made all the difference with, I'm finally at the point after, you know, a few years where I'll be in a forum and someone will say, help, you know, I'm, I'm struggling with formulation and five people say, look up, look up Elaine Travis, oh, you know, she has and those are your awesome brand membership. ambassadors, right? Yeah. So, uh, you're, you're, you're building your audience. I love what you said. Cause you're right. You had that audience. It was just a matter of what do they really want from me and then adjusting. So you went from those low. So if you're listening right now and you're thinking, what should I put out there? Experiment. Like Elaine was open to experimenting with those paid low, low price point. And then with the membership and now she knows, okay, I, they need it for the year. They need that coaching. That's one of your unique differentiators, by the way, it's always been right. That kind of like coaching that life coaching, that personal development aspect that you bring for salon owners. And I love how you've brought that into play in terms of your offer. So I had to sneak it in though, because yeah. most people are like with the woo, you know, they're right. like, look, I just want, I want you to tell me how to get more butts in my chair. Mm -hmm. I want you to tell me how to find more hairdressers for my salon. Like they just want the quick band-aid and the quick fix. But what I found as a, a salon owner myself and as someone who's been in the industry 37 years, 36 years, I'm like, there's so much more about the head that has to get on straight before any of the technique or the systems can be you know, execute it. Yeah. And I think you don't market that, right? Because no. to your point, they just want to know, how do I grow my darn salon? But then that becomes one of the things that people remember you for, right? Like, oh, I, Elaine, like got my head right. And it was unexpected. It's like kind of your Trojan horse, right? Yeah. So love that. And then, but tell me, you had a dream. When we started working together, you're like, your dream was to what with your salon? And then we kind of like, uh, we spoiled it already because we know you are now. But uh, tell me what your dream was when you joined the mastermind. What did you want to do? So I was, I was very burned out from both owning a salon and being behind the chair as a colorist. I still loved 
all things about color, but I was physically exhausted by, you know, arms up in the air, doing it, doing it, doing it every day. So again, the, the income piece, I kept saying, how am I ever going to replace what I do behind the chair with education? And it, it was the fear that was so overwhelming. So we move, you know, I think in my notes at the mastermind, it probably says, I just want to live at the beach. Yep. I want to have freedom of time, freedom of income and, you know, all those things and not be tied to such a schedule. My life was on schedule from the age of 14. It was like calendar, schedule, alarm clock, always have to be somewhere, two, three jobs at a time, struggle, struggle, struggle bus. And I was like, I just want to get to a point where I can wake up when my body wants to wake up. I can do what I want to do, be where I want to be, travel at any time and still make an income. And I am happy to say I am here and loving every minute of it. My husband and I just got back from a 30 day vacation. It's our 35th, 31st anniversary, and we went to California, Maui for 19 days, back to California on the way back, and we just got back on Monday, oh, and wow. I did not work the entire time. I didn't do a single thing, and I checked my stripe, and I had money in there every day, and I didn't have to sweat going out to dinner or doing anything because the money was there. And when I tell you, and I know you know this because you work with people that were where I was every day. You never think when you're starting out, it could ever happen. You're like, you hear the stories, you know, you hear about James Wedmore and Amy Porterfield and Rick Mulready and yeah. Pat Flynn. And, you know, you have all these mentors and heroes in the industry and you're like, oh, that sounds so amazing. But you always have the big butts and my butt got bigger and bigger. So thank you for making my butt smaller. <laughs> I wish it was literally and not figuratively, but my butt has gone away because I no longer am afraid. And to your point, when you say, when you told me to do something, I did it. And I think yes. that's probably the difference between the people that succeed and don't succeed. I see my sister right now is going through it. She's starting out in the space and she's not understanding anything. Her coach is very frustrated with her, as I'm sure you have been with me. And I just keep saying to my sister, just, I said, if you don't want to at times murder your coach, get a new coach because yeah, you have that, to that have that tough love. You. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you sold your salon in Pennsylvania, right? So like check. Okay. Uh, do you mind sharing how much you've made uh, off of your courses? So when I moved to Florida and I burned my boat and I stopped doing hair and I got rid of like, everything was gone. Like I was like a homeless person, literally like had no home, had no job. And I had heard people say that all the time on podcasts, like you just have to go all in, you have to quit your day job. And I was like, easy for them to say they're doing, you know, eight figures a year, but it's so true. It is so true. Cause I kept having a big toe in the salon and a little toe in the digital world and it's too much and too hectic and you never really laser focus. So the minute I said, this is it. And for me, I was walking on the beach, my happy place. I'm like, okay, I'm here. I moved to Florida. We were renting a home because we had sold our house and we were like, we don't want to react and hurry up and buy something and then hate it. So we're living in temporary housing. I have no job. And I'm like, feel like an elephant's on my chest. And I was like, okay, you have to just do this. You know what to do. Gina told you what to do. You've done all the prep work. Now it's just a matter of making it your full-time gig. You've got this. If you can make six figures in your first year doing this, that's your proof of concept from there. You'll just hit the ground running and it's all going to be okay. And I was like, good luck with that. Right. Cause that's what everybody thinks when you're starting out. So I'm doing my little 37, 57, 97, I'm chugging along and I'm looking at my stripe and the numbers going up and up and up. And I finished year one was like a $103,000, something that was like yeah. three, three right over, over my, yeah. my goal. And I was like, <laughs> Oh my God, I was so excited. So then I was like, okay, next time I want to do 150 and the next year was 180. So it kept being like a higher. And I was like, well, I'm making my goals too small. You know, I'm making yeah. it too easy because the universe listens. Right. And I kept mm -hmm. saying, I'll be thrilled if I get to this and I would get to exactly that. So I was like, okay, now I'm going to make my goal bigger. So I, this past year I said the, the second, it was 103, then 180. And then I was like, if I could get to 
200, I'll be thrilled. And I think year three was like 225 or something like that. So now this year is like, oh, what am I, what am I going to make my goal this year? Because it's been crazy. I mean, and this is in a pandemic, right? Yeah. So I was like, oh, MG, what am I going to do? The salon, on the other hand, the brick and mortar was even scarier because they closed all salons. Right. So if I hadn't made this pivot, I would be even more in fear and scared about like, what, how am I going to pay my bills? Where digitally the pandemic was a gift. All the hairdressers were home. All the educators were home. I started to create these summits within 10 minutes. Like I'm not an overthinker and I'm so not structured. So I would literally be sitting in my bedroom in my pajamas and I'd be like, you know what? Everybody's home. We have to do like a virtual hair show. It's never been done. I'm going to do it. And I did it on StreamYard, Scrappy in Facebook, ah, yeah. like free to everybody got all these amazing educators, famous educators. They get 60,000 for a keynote. We're teaching with me free online and it just kept developing and these relationships developed. I mean, I could, this podcast will be five hours long if I have to tell you how many amazing things this has done for my career. I'm so thrilled with everything. I, I love it. I love hearing these updates. One of the reasons I love doing this podcast is hearing these updates from my incredible grads. And one of the things I remember you struggled with was the tech. Do you remember this? And uh, you would have your son and your daughter would help you, right? But to your point, you got it done. Like I would boss you around a little bit and you'd be like, and be like, how am I going to do that? Be like, ask your daughter, right? Do you remember those days? Yeah, my poor daughter. Thanks you for that. For that. She's still my virtual assistant. She's now awesome. my part-time oh. virtual assistant because everybody's stealing her from me. That's what happens when, mm -hmm. you know, she learned along with me from you. And she got so good at everything that she's like, Hey, this is a great little gig. So she does it part-time. Um, but I have started to delegate. Like I have a Facebook ads yeah. manager now, right. um, very important piece. Yeah. I struggled with that. Um, I do have another part-time VA in the Philippines that's doing my Instagram because I hate doing my Instagram. She's doing a great job. She literally, God bless her. She doesn't know me. She doesn't know my content. She doesn't know what the hell I'm talking about. She goes into my coffee chats and my YouTube videos and she'll grab exactly the perfect thing to say in every one of my posts and I don't give her any instruction. Uh, so that was, that. that was five, five people later. Like it's not always that no, easy. Yeah. It has to be the right, right. person, yeah. but I didn't stop looking. I was like, Good. there has to be somebody told, who can yes. do this. And we talked about that, right? Like you just got to keep interviewing. Uh, I, I, we could talk for hours, Elaine. I, I do want you to tell our listeners, what are some pieces of advice? Like if you had to do it again, or if you were a new course creator starting out, like what kind of guidance would you give right now? So the number one thing, and I hear my sister doing it and I, I know I yeah, was doing it right. is the, but I can't afford, but I can't afford, but I can't mm -hmm. afford. And I'm like, I feel it because when you're starting out, you're like, I can't keep throwing money at this thing that I don't know it's going to pay me back, but it's a catch 22 because the, the more you sit in tech struggle and the more time you waste on that, is that could be paying you back. Facebook ads, for instance, you know, everybody says, well, I don't want to pay for ads because I don't have enough business to pay for the ad. Well, you don't have enough business because you didn't pay for the ad. Um, you know, we take out loans for cars. We take out loans for homes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to just bet on yourself and take out yeah. a loan to get going in your business and just get a little bit of help just until you get started. Like I sat in my crap and just trying to set up my Kajabi. Kajabi <laughs> was so overwhelming to me in the beginning. Yeah. I was yeah. like, I don't even know how to get into my own damn course myself. Like that's how overwhelming it was. And the second I said, okay, there's other people that are professionals that do this for a living. And I let go and let them do it and paid the money. I think it was three grand, something like that, which mm -hmm. seemed like 30 grand at the time. Right but I paid for someone to get it all set up, get it all branded pretty, walk me through how to do things. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, I should have done that right out of the gate because yeah. I started out. I think what most people, you probably see them do is yeah. like piecework of like, yeah. you know, MailChimp for the email and right. then lead pages for the lead page. And then you had, now you have like six different platforms where the all-in-one felt so out of reach and too high tech. But now I'm like, oh man, if I would, I, I could do, I could hang up with you and do a course this afternoon. Like that's right. how easy it is once I it's all in one place. That's, 
that's amazing. And this idea of you investing, like you weren't even making that much money yet. And you invested in the mastermind, right? You invested in coaching because you knew that's what you needed. Like, and, and I think you knew you were in for great things, right? And you're like, I just need somebody to help me fulfill that greatness. That well, you were you were it. I was putting everything on red on roulette. Like I, I had the conversation <laughs> with my husband. He was like, Oh God, here we go, something else, because it had been by this course, by that mm -hmm. course, on like how to the how to is great. Having somebody say, you know, buy this microphone, buy this ring light, buy this thing, that's awesome. But until you have a Gina in your camp saying, do this, do that, like having that information and actually doing the thing, I think is the biggest disconnect because I had those courses for two years before meeting you and I would, you know, you'd watch a video, get overwhelmed and then go back to doing hair. It was like, this is too much. Yeah. So I think sometimes that is, but, but talking my husband into spending the money, I remember he's like, when I told him the price, he goes, Oh, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Go for it. But that was per month. He thought that was the whole thing for like six months. So I was like, no, that's per month. And he was like, oh. and he's like, you know what? You got to just do it. Cause you've come this far and it could be the difference. And you know, this is it. Like after this, this is it. Yeah. So thank God it was, it, was it. Yeah. <laughs> it worked out. Uh, Elaine, tell us what's next and where we can learn more about what you're doing in your content. So what's next? Because I love to travel so much. I've started doing in-person retreats. I have one coming up next weekend. Um, it's here in, Florida? in okay. Florida. I have it this weekend. And then I have another one in March. But because I fell in love with Maui while I was there, I chatted with a hairdresser who's one of my, I got to Maui because of one of my members. So the connection in the community is amazing. And she said, you need to have a retreat here. Nobody has education in Hawaii. So that's the goal is to have a Maui retreat for hairdressers next September um, and to have them two, three, four times a year. Like I love getting people together. So stepping, taking the digital relationship and taking it into in-person because I think people have Zoom fatigue and yes. a lot of COVID disconnection. Um, so I like having both. I like having the hybrid of in-person and also digital. And that's your um, gift too, bringing people together, right. And connecting with them, one of your gifts. So, okay. I love that. And then where can we, where should we go to learn more about your content and your courses? Great. So my website is www.expertcolorsolutions.com. Um, I will say one of my regrets is not using my name mm -hmm. as my business. Um, starting out again, analysis paralysis, you're like, I have to have this fabulous name and it has to sound so official. And to me, expert color solutions sounds like a team of 50 in this big corporation of like not personal touch where elainetravis.com, you know, you're getting Elaine Travis, you know, I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to answer your questions about color. So it's, on my, it's not that it's too late, but it's complicated trying to get it just my name. So I've kept expert color solutions, but if you're listening and you're just starting out, there's no one like you. You're great just as you are and your name is enough. Uh, it would have been much easier. So expertcolorsolutions.com. I am Elaine Travis on um, YouTube. My Facebook coffee chats are Expert Color Solutions on Facebook. And I also am Expert Color Solutions on Instagram. So I'm everywhere. And now I just started doing TikTok, which we'll see how, how far that goes, but ah. I'm trying. <laughs> but even if you follow Elaine, see what she's doing, seeing how she's connecting with her audience. Like you are a master connector and that's why your audience loves you. And, and you do, you take care of them. You, you give them massive value. So it has been such a pleasure. Thank you for coming by. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I hope that I've inspired someone to, uh, to click that button and say live post, do it. Don't worry about it being perfect. My course still isn't perfect. It's all about the connection and the, and the coaching piece.